This is just going to be a quick short video. This looks like something out of Alice in Wonderland, but there's something mundane and normal about the one image that's repeated all throughout. That would be the black and white checkerboard floor of the Masons, as you've all been fear porn programmed to understand. And that would be the compass and square, the official symbolic representation thereof, said Masons. There was a time in Mormon history when every male of age was required to join the Freemasons. Joseph Smith claims uh, to prophetic, prophetic authority center on visitations from heavenly messengers, while common knowledge to many, some of the angels whom visited him are not, even to lifelong Latter-day Saints, in a now canonized 1842 letter, Doctrine and Covenants 128, Smith writes of diver angels, such as Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael, who each gave their dispensation, their rights, and their keys, and their honors, and their majesty, and glory, and the power of their priesthood. This painting depicts those six concepts through unnamed heavenly messengers diving down from heaven ready to dispense a symbolic item related to the teachings and rituals of Mormonism. You can see this one's got like a potion, this one's got like a ram's horn, and some sort of cloth. This one's got like maybe the broken tablets, it's a piece of rock in both hands, and this one's got some sort of box, but this one clearly has the compass and square. I think it may have since changed, but the magic underwear that Mormons usually wear used to have the compass and square insignia sewn right into them. My point is, this is going to be the prelude to a mind bender, and later on I'm going to explain the uh, understanding I now have about how the Garden of Eden story and Jesus Christ on the cross are psychological operations used as weapons by the predator priest class who use those to devour the life force essence like a pimp does to his hoe. Let it be known here that Mormonism, the main differentiation del delineation between mainstream Mormonism and mainstream Christianity, is that they believe the Garden of Eden, the bite of the apple, was a gift. And what most would call the downfall of man, they say, was actually a blessing to know the knowledge of good and evil. They also happen not to display the crucifix with Jesus strung up on the cross on their churches. So in my next uh, longer dissertation, this is prelude to a mind bender. Next one will be mind bender explaining in greater detail how the Garden of Eden story was meant to give you a feeling of abandonment and cause the same effects that happen that allow a pimp to exploit a prostitute and suck her life force essence and have her turning tricks to support his way of life. And that is what the priest class has done in a vampiric way. Using the story of the Garden of Eden and compounding on that with the story of Christ who died for your sins. So I'm going to help you let go of some of the things we've all been programmed with. All those black and white checkerboards, everything in here looks like it's out of the Alice in Wonderland. And the only thing that's repeated in there is the eyeball. There's more eyeballs in there than a, than a uh, Alex Gray painting used by Tool, the band Tool. They include Alex Gray all throughout their music videos and he puts eyeballs everywhere. But uh, everything in there is bizarre, straight out of uh, Alice in Wonderland, except that checkerboard floor that's everywhere and people know it to be associated with the Freemasons. So when I get home, I'm going to expand on these ideas rather than disturbing everyone's trip to the art museum. I'm here at Springville Art Museum. I'm going to show you a couple more images. You see the difference? <laughs> Between that moon and this moon? 
If you've been watching my videos, you know it. The moon never looked like that in all of history. It always looked like that. Is this what you conjure up as an image of the return of Christ? probably a little different than what most people have envisioned when they think of the triumphal return of Christ as described in the book of Revelation. So I'm going to offer some thoughts when I get home for some alternatives to that Garden of Eden story and how he didn't die for your sins. And it looks like someone <laughs> has noticed one of the signs in the heavens and placed it here on this painting that just happens to be hung right next to one that depicts the moon as it's always been. Or within, within eyeball shot. That's how the moon has always looked. We tend to use faith to rationalize those things that we are conditioned to believe to be true, yet are unattainable, the intangible. Faith suggests that we believe in those things that cannot be seen, heard, smelled, or touched, yet visual evidence tells us to believe things to be real, even when the tangible can never be physically realized. There is an interesting parallel between that which cannot be seen, but believed to be real, and that which can be seen, yet can never be attained. This is probably the end of Prelude to a Mind Bender. My following video will be an in-depth and detailed dissertation of the aforementioned things I've covered. Oh, by the way, the moon was never like that. <laughs> it was always like that, just to be redundant. Just for fun, let's look at this hot goddess reaper. You ever seen the Grim Reaper as a woman? A little Ouroboros action. The snake eating its tail. A little bit of five-sided Saturn cube. Six-sided? Five-sided. Some horned god action. This thing just looks cool as hell. No pun intended. This is depicting a scene described in the Book of Mormon. And it's titled Lehi and the Pillar of Fire. Apparently he saw a vision in a pillar of fire that was shown on a rock. It is much more likely that that was what we now know today as a film projector. The pillar of fire was simply the light being projected onto a rock just like the canvas that an overhead slide show projector shows onto a flat surface. And that pillar of fire was the beam of light in which the image was being shown. Just little logic thrown in with the myth to come up with something that makes more sense. Pillar of Fire was a film projector, a screen projector, shown on a rock, probably a flat rock. And that's what it shows here. The Pillar of Fire is on the rock, but this rock was probably vertical instead of horizontal, and the pillar of fire was also horizontal instead of vertical. The pillar of fire was a light show screen projector being cast onto a vertical surface of a flat rock. Not an actual pillar of fire coming out of a rock. That's just my guess. As part of prelude to a mind bender, it just wouldn't be right to leave this up. That's Notre Dame Cathedral burning. But what they forgot to paint was the little TR-3B spacecraft that was right up here that Mr. Logic Before Authority, Daniel Alexander, 
spotted clear as day from the camera across the street at whichever hotel it is, uh, I don't remember. And then when I zoomed in to a portal on top of the cathedral, using zoom and contrast, it went way down in. There was a serpent guarding the portal in one scene, airborne over here in another scene, and down in the portal, something like the flower of life. I've learned recently what I believe I'm performing is something to do with muon radiation, also known as cosmic rays. Muons are the particles of solar radiation that get through that allow people to do a form of ground penetrating radar where they can actually detect the cavities underneath the pyramids and do something like ground penetrating radar. I'll include a link in the description of this video that gives a quick explanation of what it's talking about. <clears throat> but I believe that's what is happening when I'm able to zoom and contrast into these machinery and structures in the sky or that which was in the portal. And so the serpent that was on top of the portal in one frame and flying over here beside the portal in another frame might be one of these. Yeah, it's probably one of these. It's like he looks at you as you go around, man. It's like he's just looking right at you. Old Father Time here. One good dragon deserves another. By the way, that wasn't a fire any more than Paradise, California fires were just fires any more than the ones that are wildfire brush fires in Australia right now are just fires. <clears throat> they say that there's been like 50 koala bears or 500 koala bears died from the fires and four people, but I heard in the news last night on a radio broadcast that the body count of people may be much higher because they're not finding bodies, the bodies are turned to ash. Brush fire does not turn bodies to ash. That wasn't a fire. In the link in the description of this video, I'll include a link to the video that shows the lasers that hit the bridge in Spanish Fork. And along with that was the plasma fires that destroyed the rest of the forest there and left what I refer to in the video as skeletons. Skeletons of trees where you could see the outline of what was once a branch that got turned to red dust. So thoroughly burned, it just turns it to ash. And that is what they're finding in Australia right now is people's bodies that have been turned to ash, just like people in Paradise, California were turned to a pile of bones and ash in the driver's seat of their car. That wasn't a fire. And I have to include this, because the icon on my YouTube page is a tree being struck by lightning. And plenty of my videos show that the trees have been hollowed out from the inside by something like lightning, plasma, what I call field activated combustion synthesis. Hollowed from the inside out by underground lightning. Here's a quick example of the Mandela effect. There are thousands of statues and paintings that show the lion laying with the lamb and that's how everyone remembers the Bible depicting it. And apparently now when you read the Bible it says when the wolf will lay with the lamb. Why then are there thousands of pictures and statues of the lion laying with the lamb and that's how everyone remembers it. That's one of the Mandela effect incidents that are very compelling. Side note, maybe someone else knows what this is. That image right there, here in Springville, there's a graveyard where uh, a tenth of the graves have that on them and they're all from the 
18 and early 1900s. Epstein didn't kill himself. 